My name is uh, Jones, and uh, today we are going to look at the levels of uh, management and also the principles of management. So we are going to look at levels and the principles of uh, management. Okay, so this is in a series of our management lessons where we have PowerPoint presentation and also we also have presentation in Word um, on another series of uh, looking at uh, management. So the objectives of uh, this lesson is that you should be able to define the term management, should be able to explain why management is important at nursing, should be able to explain the three levels of uh, management, and we should be able to discuss the principles of uh, management. So the scientific management uh, given by Stoner 1987 is that it is the process of planning, organizing, leading, and controlling the work of uh, organizational members and of using all available resources uh, to reach uh, stated organization goals. So in management, the elements of planning, organizing, leading, and controlling, or POLC, are very, very important, okay? That is in the work of organization members and using all available resources so that we reach at the stated the organization goals. So you can use these elements so that you reach the organization goals. But in between, there are resources that have to be used prudently. Okay, so that is the definition of management. Then uh, other authors have looked at management as getting things done through and with other people in organized uh, groups. Okay, so that is uh, the second uh, definition of uh, management. Let us now define leadership. It can be looked at as a process whereby an individual influences a group of individuals uh, to achieve a common goal. So in leadership, uh, the word influence uh, plays a cardinal role. So it can be an individual, a group of other individuals that may influence another so that a certain common goal can be reached. Okay, so this is goal, it can be that individual's goal or that other group's goal that is influencing others. So in leadership, we are necessarily looking at a process whereby uh, one individual or an individual is influencing a group of others uh, to achieve a common goal. Administration. This uh, refers to uh, the group of individuals who are in charge of creating and enforcing rules and regulations, or those in leadership position who complete important uh, tasks. The group of people who manage or direct an institution. Okay, so some of the other things or important things for you to know about management is that it is not an activity that exists on its own or that it may exist in isolation. Leather should look at management as a description of uh, a variety of activities that are carried out uh, by those uh, members of uh, the organization whose role is the, that of um, a manager. Okay, so now let us explain the need for management in nursing, the need for management in nursing. So today we all know that uh, nurses are the majority of qualified human eh? resource force in health service management at all levels of individual patient in the ward or any department. So nurses as a part of the human resource that is needed in managing the affairs of others and uh, in this instance that they say the patient uh, need to have good management uh, uh, skills because we look at the affairs of other people's lives and also affairs of resources that are needed to be used on these clients that come to us. So nurses are also made to shoulder the responsibility and accountability to the consent in all their nursing practice. So um, uh, management uh, knowledge is important uh, to nursing uh, because it helps in um, accountability. Okay, so the accountability here becomes a key word. You know, we need to be accountable for the resources that we are using. We need to be accountable for the time, okay, the spent on the patients, those that are critical when other duties might be neglected. We are responsible for the 
distribution of our workforce so all that so we need to be accountable nurses are also expected to perform management functions such as uh, uh, plan uh, planning and nursing care making decisions assuming leadership supervisory laws and organizing the health care so we need uh, the knowledge of uh, management uh, because uh, sometimes we find ourselves assuming uh, these roles of managers uh, also the roles of making uh, decisions the other reason why management is needed in nursing is that the concept of management is crucial to the provision of best nursing services to the patient. So to improve on the nursing care, also it is uh, it's important because it is crucial in the provision of improved or better health care services. So management is needed in nursing. Okay, so management is uh, the responsibility of all nurses. So because we look at the affairs of uh, different patients, affairs of different uh, activities that, that happens within the hospital or around the patient. Okay, so now away from that, let us now look at the uh, levels of uh, management. Levels of management are classified in hierarchy of authority. Different levels also perform different uh, tasks. So there is the upper or the top managers, usually owners of the business or uh, board of directors of an organization. So the upper or top manager here, they can be, they can have uh, some of the following titles, uh, president, uh, board of director, chief executive officer. So their function mostly is uh, to oversee and control the whole entire organization okay then they make a strategic decision and mobilize the resources so it's important that you know the function of the top managers okay in uh, appreciating the levels of management so the first function is oversee and control the whole entire organization okay by formulating uh, policies and uh, doing such things they may also make strategic decisions and mobilize resources. Then we have uh, the middle managers. Examples of middle managers may include a general manager, regional manager, division manager. Their duty is uh, to execute uh, organization plans, uh, policy, and objectives from top management. So they execute uh, these organizational plans, a policy, and objectives. Okay, that is the PPO from top management plans, uh, plans, a policy, and the objectives. But those are the ones we're calling the PPO of, from top management. Okay, so they may provide the guidelines to lower level management uh, for better performance. Uh, they design information systems uh, such as uh, performance uh, indicators reward assisting and the problem solving. Then uh, we have the third level, which is the, the lower level management. These are first line managers. Their duties include assigning employee tasks, supervise day-to-day -day action, ensure quality, ensure production or service, and also up uh, channeling employee problems okay so these are the line managers they are responsible for uh, up channeling employee uh, problems so these uh, these are the managers actually that uh, most employees interact with and their main function can be summarized as uh, supervision, motivation, career planning, and performance, uh, performance feedback. So these are the lower managers. So when you talk of the SMCP, that is the main function uh, that is performed by the lower managers or the line managers. Okay, that is to do with supervision, motivation, career planning, and performance feedback. Okay, so now let us look at our principles of management. Our concentration will be on 
the father, the principles that uh, were proposed by the father of management, that is Henley Payo. So we're going to look at the uh, principles of uh, management. We are looking at levels of uh, management now. Let us appreciate uh, the principles of uh, management. So let us on now define the word uh, principle. A principle is a general belief or truth that is used as a base for reasoning or action or the development of a future idea. So when you look at the principle, is uh, is uh, it should be looked at as a general belief or truth that uh, is used as a base or standard, okay, for reasoning. Okay, so that is the way you can look. Other authors have looked at the principle as a strong belief in and a practice of honorable behavior. So that's which you might look at as a standard. So now principles of management. Most uh, managers of organization are based their day-to-day -day learning of the organization using Henry Fayot's principles of management. Henley Fayo, known as the father of management, came up with uh, 14 uh, principles of management. Okay, so you can also look at uh, one of the lessons uh, of management where we have tried uh, to simplify how you can remember these, uh, uh, these uh, principles like DAD, I see USSR, O, I see, like letter O, I and C. Okay, so dad d a d okay i c that is i letter i then c that is s double e okay as they are written i see ussr as those letters okay so that i see ussr or i see so those letters should be 14 okay but otherwise you can also look at another lesson where you have looked uh, strictly at the principles of management by henry fayon so one of the principles or the first principle is uh, the vision of labor. So this is uh, the breakdown of work of an organization's uh, complex uh, tasks into components so that each individual performs a particular set of activities instead of a whole. So you divide the labor, you divide like partitioning. So the task should be assigned according to specialization and assign responsibility to specific uh, people. It's not the matter of just putting in individuals. Individuals, these have specialization. Those that are responsible for IT, okay, those that are responsible for giving healthcare service, those that are responsible for maintenance. So in division of labor, you put them accordingly, not just lump them, okay, so because people have specialty. Fayo presented worker specialization as the best way to use a human resource over the organization. Number two is authority and responsibility. Authority is the power, okay, the right to assign duties to subordinates and to ensure that they are carried out. It is uh, the right to give orders and the power to exert obedience. It involves execution of activities or duties. Then when you talk of responsibility, it is uh, the accepted obligation to do certain tasks the obligation to ensure that uh, authority is uh, properly used and the duties are properly um, carried out number three is a uh, discipline discipline refers to obedience uh, to rules proper conduct in uh, relation to others and respect uh, uh, respect uh, to authority Members in the organization need to respect the rules and agreements that govern the organization. This includes outward marks of respect. There must be clear expectations and sanctions when there is violation of a discipline, for example, discipline code of conduct or discipline code. Okay, so if you want to maintain um, the discipline within an institution, uh, at least uh, devise a disciplinary code of conduct so that it may guide people on uh, how to carry themselves. Scare chain. Uh, this is the line of uh, authority from uh, top uh, to bottom of an organization. It refers to the chain of uh, superiors, 
ranging from top managers uh, to the lowest rank. The line of authority from top to bottom linking all managers at all levels. This means that top managers uh, possesses the most authority. The first line as supervisors also mean they will possess uh, the least authority. So all line of authority must be kept within a chain of command and communication should follow formal channel in the hierarchy. Number five, unit of uh, command. This means uh, each employee should receive orders from one person or supervisor. Fayo believed that when an employee uh, reported to more than one supervisor, uh, conflict in instructions and confusion of authority would result. Therefore, everyone should have one superior. Number six, unit of uh, direction. Those operations, um, those operations are within the organization that have the same objective uh, should be directed by only one manager using one plan. For example, theater should have one manager using one plan. Labor, a word that should have one manager using one plan. So in this uh, line, in, our, in this way, we are going to have a unity of uh, direction. Okay, so this unit of direction cannot be achieved if at all you have someone, uh, let's say from a different uh, department and their needs, of, uh, their needs of resources might be different. So it may bring in some more uh, conflicts. So we need to have line managers for each and every uh, department so that the needs can be attended to. So this principle seeks uh, to ensure unity in an need organization. Number seven, centralization. This is uh, decreasing the role of, uh, the role of uh, subordinates in uh, decision making. While some, authorities, uh, while some authority should be given to subordinates uh, to make decisions, all major policy decisions should be made at the top management level. Thus, managers uh, should retain the final responsibility. So in centralization, okay, we are saying this is a decreasing the role of subordinates in the decision making. Now the opposite of centralization is a decentralization, which means increasing the importance or sharing of authority with the lower levels. The organization should strive to achieve a proper balance. Decentralize Okay, you allow lower managers uh, to make more decisions about activities that are happening. While centralization is where more of decision making, you know, centers on the top managers. Number eight, equity. Managers uh, should be both uh, friendly and fair to their subordinates for them uh, to be encouraged uh, to fulfill their duties uh, with a devotion and a loyal team. However, friendliness uh, should be coupled with the justice. All employees must be treated alike or fairly. Number nine, a subordination of individual interests uh, to the common goal. There, so here we are saying interest of the uh, organization must take a priority over the interest of an individual or a particular group if there is a conflict uh, between the two. So what, what the organization has to achieve, okay, must take precedence, okay, unlike the interest of an individual. So this means that the interest of one person should not take priority over the interest of the organization as a whole. The individual interest should be integrated with the organization interest as much as a possible. Number 10, remuneration. This means that workers uh, should uh, receive a pay for the work done as this is the chief motivation and therefore greatly influences uh, productivity. The means and methods of remuneration should also be fair. Salaries are prices of services rendered by employees 
and should be fair and provide satisfaction both to the employee and the employer. It is important to reward efforts that support the organization and satisfaction should be to both employees and employers. Number 11, stability. Okay, stability of tenure or stability and tenure of staff or personnel. Stability means being firmly fixed or established. Therefore, employees need to be given time to settle into their jobs. The period of service should not be too short and employee, employees should not be moved from position frequently from one position to the other. This uh, will cause them to fail to perform. So the high employee turnover rate is not good for the efficient functioning of an organization. Number 12, initiative. Every employee at all levels should be allowed to carry out suggestions. Initiative is the ability to think of a plan and carry it out. The power or right to begin something within the limit of authority and discipline. Employees should be encouraged to initiate new ideas and carry out their plans. Number 13, Espili Deco. Employers should, it means employers should work as a team, okay? One spirit should work as a team because there is strength in a unity. Management should promote a team spirit as it gives the organization a sense of unity. Number 14, order. Material and people should be in their right place at the right time. People in particular should also be in the jobs or position they are most suited where they are specialized. Okay, just because let's say you want uh, to promote uh, someone who has done let's say theater nursing, but the, the position is not there, then you promote them to work in a ward for the midwives. Okay, they may fail to perform to their base of knowledge uh, because they may face some limitation. Okay, but if you promote uh, someone who's a midwife in the midwifery section, uh, it helps them to put in their best within the horizon of their knowledge okay so we are looking at the levels of management and the principles of management within this lesson okay so you are free to pause the lesson at any point okay as you listen and so that you you can grasp the points nicely so this is um, unit one okay this is unit one in our series of lessons where we are looking at uh, management. So this is unit one. Other units will come. These are different uh, PowerPoint uh, notes that we are revealing. Okay, we are trying to review. Okay, so about uh, management. So you should be able to you should be able to see that the objectives that we are set for this lesson have been met because when we are putting the notes together, we see that uh, they meet uh, the objectives. So thank you very much and uh, keep uh, studying.